Hey guys, Jimmy Smith again. Um, this time, it's kind of funny. I don't have a specific fight thing to talk about. I don't have a specific fight, specific breakdown. What I want to do is talk about something that I've, I've... You always see it around. I don't know if we're seeing it now more than recently. Every time Connor comes up, we end up on this topic to some degree. And now that I have the opportunity with this channel to break it down uh, in kind of a long form, I want to talk about it. I call it the money myth, which is understandably perpetuated by the UFC, which I've told a lot of people, when you look at dollars and cents and how to make a living and how to make to maximize your profits, if you think with that lens, most of what Dana White and the UFC does makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. It might be mercenary, it might be cold, it might be uh, you know cruel and all, but financially, it's what makes the most sense. And one of the attitudes that you see uh, propagated a lot is this idea of once I pay fighters a lot, they won't want to fight anymore. And I've seen fans echo this, strangely enough. Once I pay fighters, they don't want to fight anymore. And you see it coming back a lot when about Connor's return. He keeps talking about, well, he has money, he has money, he has money. The obvious implication is kind of like when I'm not paying fighters a lot or what a lot of people feel they deserve, I'm essentially making sure that they fight. You get the fights you want. Fighters get paid a lot. Fighters get too big. They don't want to do certain things. Now, what I want to break down is a thing that most people don't think about, which is it isn't money. It's time. It's age. One of the things that came out when uh, the UFC, obviously, with their lawsuit that's coming up, uh, it's going to be in April, I believe, in a couple months, uh, the antitrust lawsuit. One of the things that has come up in discovery is what fighters got paid and when they got paid, right? And one of the things that was kind of surprising to me is unless a fighter had a deal, Anderson Silva clearly did, um, GSP did, he said after the John, right before the John Fitch fight, he basically held out and and wouldn't renegotiate and was betting basically his whole career that he would beat John Fitch. And they wanted to resign him. He went, no, I'll resign after the, you know, I'll be a free agent after the John Fitch fight and I'm going to try things out. Well, they came back to him with a big offer. He signed it. He made plenty of money. So what's very interesting to me is the trajectory of the money, meaning a lot of these fighters didn't make real money until comparatively late in their careers, even big names. Names that I thought were pretty big and should have been making pretty big money earlier on weren't until much later. And everyone forgets that trajectory. What I mean by that is most athletes in contact sports and other sports, their physical prime and their maximum earning potential line up pretty well. Yes, there are some notable exceptions. Some certain athletes peak late. Uh, some athletes sign stupid contracts early on. Um, Scotty Pippen springs to mind, wasn't making as much money as everybody else, even though in the 90s he was at the height of his powers. All this stuff. Every now and then there's an anomaly. But generally speaking, in sports, your maximum earning potential is right when you are in your mid-20s, right in your physical prime. NFL, first-round draft pick, obviously signs a rookie contract, two or three years, let's say they're a great rookie, let's say they make a couple of Pro Bowls, right when you're 25, 26, 27 is when you get that big contract and you're making huge money, mid-20s to, let's say, early 30s. In MMA, what you can't get around is most of these fighters don't make big money until they're at retirement age. They're already in their early 30s. They're already thinking about retiring. It isn't, I've made a lot of money, I'm out of here. It's, I've made a lot of money and I'm 34. I'm 35. That's when every athlete thinks about retiring or is already retired. But it, it, people don't talk enough about the timing of when fighters make money. Now, uh, my broadcast partner at ESPN, Phil Murphy, we were doing a thing uh, middle of last year, I think, about kind of the GOAT conversation, which is always a, a fun topic. And he asked me, he said, why are so many of the GOATs, Anderson Silva, GSP, John Jones to some degree, uh, the, the champions with the most numbers, why are they all of the same era? Right? Why are they all of the same time period? I mean, all these guys were contemporaries, all fighting at the same time. And they, you know, Was it just a golden era of MMA? And I said, no, you got a title shot in your first couple fights. 
So these guys came to the UFC, looked good in a couple fights, got a title shot. And if they want it, they're young. They're in their physical prime. So they get five, six, I don't know, maybe seven, eight good years as champion or contender. That doesn't happen anymore. When you look at fighters now, it's five, six, seven. I mean, look at Bilal Muhammad has spent his whole career over the last decade in the UFC and hasn't gotten a title shot yet. If he fights Leon Edwards, let's say, late this year and wins it, he's, what, 35? 36? Like he's not going to have a long run. He just can't. <laughs> you know, between 36 and 40, he's going to lose the title. So what you don't see now is those long extended title runs as much as we did back then because guys won it when they were in their earlier mid-20s. So when people talk about, oh, this fighter makes X amount of dollars, he's, he's going to retire. Folks, Sugar Ray Leonard, 24 years old. When he fought Roberto Duran and made $10 million, that is $40 million in 2024. $40 million. Fought him in a rematch, made $7 million, which once again in adjusted dollars would be in the 30s. He never had to fight again. Fights Tommy Hearns. Why? He's 25. He really wants to do this. He really wants to be number one, and I'm 24, and nothing can stop me. And I, all those things start slowing down to your late 20s, early 30s. You know, camps take more out of you. You start feeling things you didn't feel before. Injuries that were a couple days now take forever. And the best <laughs> expression I ever heard about jujitsu in your 40s is what hurts now hurts forever. When I was in my 20s, I cracked my wrist. I'm like, oh, God damn. You know, and a couple days was fine. Now I'm like, that wrist is going to be a, a, a minor problem probably for the rest of my life. It's just what it is. I've got to live with it. And what you're doing is is your the, the, the returns on your fighting tend to happen right when your body is going, I don't know how long you want to do this. Now, Conor McGregor is a bit of an exception. He's a bit of an outlier. Why? He made his money completely outside fighting uh, with obviously proper 12 and all stuff. So it's almost like a fighter winning the lottery. But once again, it happened comparatively late in his career. It happened. Compa- it, it, I don't think it's a money thing. If if he had sold proper 12 and he's 25, 26, I think he goes on a run anyway. Because that's how 25 and 26-year-olds think. They want to be right there doing their best work. My body feels great. Everything's wonderful. The way the UFC's pay structure works, a lot of these guys just don't sign the big deal until they're – at least out of their first UFC contract, probably their second one, usually. Well, by then you're 28, 29, and things are starting to catch up with you. And if you sign that big deal, you fight one or two of them. Um, Jorge Masvidal, remember when he signed a big deal and said, hey, man, I just signed this big deal. I'm making real money. He fought twice more on that deal? Once, twice more? It's just by the time you sign that, all right, I'm ready to make big money, you are at the end of your run. And I don't think that's talked about enough is it isn't about money. It's about t- trajectory. It's about age. It's about where you are in your career when you start making real money. And also this idea of once I start paying them, they're not going to perform. There is no other sport that works that way. No one gives a big contract to a quarterback, running back, anything in the NFL, and then goes, well, they're going to stop playing now. No, it's most of them do their best work after that. So the, the, what always gets me about applying logic to somebody is like, well, do you apply that logic to yourself? Do you work less when you make more money? No, most people don't. <coughs> Certainly executives at companies don't. The people that decide what other people get paid never say, all right, I don't, don't give me that bonus. I'm not going to work as hard. No, I, that's not quite how it works. Um, so it's kind of funny to me. But no other sport says, well, as soon as we give, you know, this quarterback, their their gigantic pay, they're, they're going to stop playing. You know, Tom Brady never did. Ben Roethlisberger never did. Peyton Manning never did. They made huge money all the way till the end, and they were giving everything they had all the way till the end. Their bodies eventually, like everybody else's, gives out on them. So always keep that in mind. When you, when you look at what a fighter's getting paid and when they walk away and why they walk away, don't look at here's where they got paid in their last fight. Look at how old they are and how many fights they've had. I think you'll find that almost everybody 
tries to or thinks about walking away from the sport at about the same time, right? There are outliers. Once again, they keep going and going and going. But the intrinsic motivation gets harder and harder to summon as you've been through more fights and you're getting older and you have other priorities. Pauli Malignaggi said something really smart, I think, a few days ago. I saw it. I don't know exactly when he said it. It was when somebody has a kid and they have a family, they'll say, oh, I have more to fight for now. And he goes, what you really have is a reason to not get hurt. You have a reason to go home healthy so you can play with your kid and you can do uh, all the things you need to do as a father and a husband. He goes, when you're single and you're 25, you got no reason to go home healthy. Being blind in one eye for three weeks is fine with you when you're 25 because I don't really have anything to take care of. And I thought it was a, a, a it's true. I've seen it a million times in fights. And it was a uh, guy, Brian Baker, in Bellator. He was fighting Carl Amasu, and his wife was pregnant. And Carl Amasu went for this sweet, like, flying heel hook and tapped him out, like, boom. And afterward, he told somebody in Bellator, he said, I had this sudden image of my wife giving birth and I'm on crutches, and I tapped. And I went, yeah, I get that. He had a reason to be able to walk. Now, if maybe if he had fought it for a second and would, had been able to get out and won the fight, who the hell knows? But it's this idea of it's not money, it's circumstances, it's biology, it's all these other things together that influence these decisions. Boxers, back in my day, in one fight, made... 10 times more than a UFC fighter makes their whole career. And they did another one, another one, and another one, and another one. Now, a lot of them went through money, right? A lot of them just made poor personal choices and kept needing money. But a lot of them were set, you know, a couple fights in. But they're 26, 27, and they're world beaters, and they want to keep going. <coughs> it all changes at a certain point. So keep that in mind whenever there's a story about, well, now they have money. Well, you can have money and motivation. You can have money and the desire to be great. You can have money and all of these other things. It's when one outweighs the other that there's an issue. I call it the money myth. Let me know what you think in the comment section as always. Appreciate you.